share, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in giving to this ministry, we have easy ways that you can give. First, there's Cash App. Next, there's Givelify. And guess what? Now you can give using your debit card or your credit card. Just log on to our website, which is www.tfwcc.org forward slash give and click on the square. By way of announcement, in addition to our brand new location, we also have a brand new contact number. There it is, right there at the bottom of your screen. So get out a piece of paper or get out your phones and write that number down because soon the old number will be phased out. And now, it's time for us to go and worship the Lord in the sanctuary. And at the finest of the week, please remember one thing. There's always a place for you here. Enjoy.
St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 17. I'll read in your hearing, beginning at verse number 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, somebody say as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten that were cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found, uh, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. I want to focus on verse number 15. The Bible says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Uh, I want you to find a neighbor. Don't touch him. We're still in the pandemic. Just find a neighbor. Look at them across the room. Uh, in fact, wave at him. Wave at your neighbor. And tell them, turn around. Uh, you said, or tell them like you mean it. Tell them, turn around and get loud. Turn around, Turn around and get loud. Yeah. Father, we bless you for your word. Have your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have your seats. Turn around and get loud. I want to start by highlighting the fact uh, that if there's one situation we as human beings try our best to avoid, generally speaking. Uh, it's finding ourselves in a helpless situation. We avoid helplessness like the plague. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we look down mm -hmm, in the church uh, on people who we feel are helpless. Uh, further than that, we look at people who act like they're helpless and they're not and tell them, uh, stop acting foolish. Stop acting like you don't have any sense. Uh, stop acting like you're helpless. It's something that we run from. Uh, this is why we work like we do, even in a pandemic. Uh, because most of us don't want to be dependent on Biden and the government to supply our need. Amen. Uh, we're not relying, we're not looking to rely, no matter what stereotypes say, uh, on welfare to, to get us through the day. We're not trying to do that. Uh, we're not trying to ask our brother and sisters for uh, $20 till next payday. Uh, we don't want to find ourselves in situations where we can't do for ourselves. Yes. Uh, most of us, I dare say, don't have control issues. Uh, some of us do, so I won't ask you to raise your hand. But most of us, <laughs> most of us don't have control issues. Uh, we're fine letting everybody do what they need to do, however they need to do it, but uh, the one thing that we do find is that we need to be in control of ourselves. Uh, I don't care what anybody else is doing. I need to be able to take care of myself and what belongs to me. You do what you have to do however you want to do it. But uh, as for me in my house, uh, I'm going to control this. Amen. I'm going to take care of this. I just need to be uh, in a position to take care of what I've got to take care of. I just want to live from day to day, uh, go to church, come home, take care of my family, work, uh, be able to get a bite to eat, get a good night's sleep. I, I'm not asking for a lot. I just want to be able to manage what I have. I just want to take care of what's under my control. Uh, but oftentimes, we find ourselves in situations uh, where we are truly helpless. Uh, there are some times where helplessness can't be avoided. In fact, we've all come through uh, our, our um, what I hope is the other side of a helpless situation. None of us. None of us, uh, no matter how uh, hygienic we are, no matter how uh, 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 particular we are about 
uh, keeping distance and wearing our masks. None of us were able to control uh, when or where we came in contact with the virus. Uh, I did everything I could. Every I wouldn't talk to nobody. Uh, I told people, like Jesus told Mary uh, when he was resurrected, don't touch me. Don't even come near me. I, I don't want to touch you. Uh, I'll love you from a distance. I was doing every. I'm, I'm a germaphobe in normal circumstances. <laughs> I, I, I carried Lysol and hand sanitizer with me all the time before the pandemic. So uh, this was my worst nightmare. And I was just like, oh, whatever you do, stay away from me. I was doing the best I could uh, not to be in a position where I, I was on the wrong side of this. And, and with, all of, with all of the prayer, with all of the uh, trying to live right, with all of the trying to uh, wash my hands and stay away, still found myself in a position where I, I tested positive for COVID. Yeah, that's right. I I'm a COVID survivor, and I thank God because I, I didn't have to be here. But I found myself with all of my diligence, with everything that I tried to do, still in a position where I, I, I had something and I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, if nothing else, it taught me compassion for people who get a uh, positive test all the time and there's nothing that science can do. I, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know uh, how to look. I, I felt uh, destitute. I felt dirty, if I'm being honest, because I didn't know who touched me, but I wanted to touch them afterward. Uh, because I was doing the best I could to avoid having the situation. I was doing the best I could to avoid uh, finding myself in this uh, uh, problem with this illness. And then I realized that uh, science can't do anything for me. Uh, this was uh, right around January of this year. I went a whole year just about uh, successfully <laughs> avoiding this virus. And, and right when it was the new year, I'm excited, getting ready uh, to go forward with my life. Uh, uh, got hit in, and hit hard. My whole family uh, nearly wiped out. My dad ended up in the hospital for 10 days. And, and I realized what it is to be helpless. I realized what it is to lay across my bedroom floor, uh, uh, hearing my dad choking, uh, hearing the paramedics taking him off to a hospital, and not knowing whether he's going to live. I, I know what it's like to be in a situation where uh, I'm waiting for a doctor to call me and just let me know that my dad made it through the night. I know what it's like to go to bed at night uh, not knowing if my lungs are going to fill up with, uh, with fluid over the night and if I'm going to wake up the next morning. I know what it's like to be helpless. Amen. We know what it's like not to have the power to do anything about your circumstances. It's not just COVID. Uh, there's sometimes where the money just isn't there and you can't get it. There's sometimes the doctor's report is real and you can't do anything about it. There's sometimes the judge makes a pronouncement and, and unless God changes his heart, that it is going to be the way it is and that there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. And there's something about hopeless, hopeless or helplessness breeds hopelessness. Uh, if we're not careful, we find ourselves in a situation where uh, we don't even look to God. We, 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 we find ourselves like the world where we're out there with no hope. Uh, I'm praying because at least we made it through with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I heard Bishop Gates singing a song this morning. He said, uh, how is it that we made it to the other side of this pandemic? And he sang an old song that said, it's the Holy Ghost in fire and it's keeping me alive. And I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful for the Holy Ghost and the fire that comes with it because I believe uh, that that's what kept me alive. But there, there's people out there that don't have the hope of glory. They don't have uh, the knowledge that there is a God that can save them, that there is a God who can heal them. And they find themselves being bombarded left and right by situations just like we are, and they're hopeless. Uh, but I'm so thankful that we're not hopeless this morning. I'm so thankful that we're not in a predicament where we are uh, without hope. Uh, I'm so thankful that we have a God who looks down low and sees us in our situation. He sits on the circle of the earth. And even if we have nobody else to turn to, I can turn to God. Even when nobody else will pay attention to me, uh, God will listen to me. Even when uh, my family doesn't want to be bothered with me, I know that God... I gotta move now. I said uh, 20 minutes. I'm getting out of here. Uh, but, but, but now here we find, and I'm going quickly to our text, lepers. Uh, and, and they're in a situation that they can't help. They're in a situation that they can't control. The Bible doesn't tell us how they came in contact with it, but somehow or another, 10 of them, 10 of them came across a disease that in that day was worse than the plague. So much so that by law, you could not even come around people. Uh, you had to sit outside the city in encampment. You couldn't even be with your family. You were, you were uh, extradited immediately if you had leprosy. Uh, legally, you, they would stone you if you came near anybody because they were terrified of this disease. 
Uh, I felt like stoning some people today. Come around. Not today, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> this year, I won't lie in church. This year, I felt like stoning some people. Come around me with the mask one more time. Uh, but they're out here. I almost said maskless. They're out here <laughs> with leprosy. And, and they have no power to do anything about it. Sitting on the outside of the city, helpless, and I dare say, hopeless. The Bible says that they heard. Somehow they got knowledge of the fact that, that Jesus was in the area. And that by this time, Jesus is going through Samaria and Jerusalem, and, and, and his legend precedes him. People know that this is the man that you want to talk to. Uh, if you're in a hopeless situation, this is the man that you want to get in contact with. I don't know the timeline, whether this is before or after uh, such characters as the, the woman with the issue of blood and, and uh, Jairus, is, uh, her daughter, his daughter, and, and all these individuals. But somehow or another, they realize that uh, if I'm going to talk to anybody, this is the man I need to talk to. Uh, I'm in a hopeless and helpless situation, but, but I have one ounce of hope. This is my, my last bit of hope. If he can't help me, nobody can. But, but I'm not going to waste this opportunity. I'm not going to miss this chance. And, and let me just stop right there. That, that, that Don't get luxurious in the fact that you always have access to God. I know he says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, but, but don't, don't get comfortable in that. You, you better take your opportunities while we have them. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know uh, when our next breath is coming up. Our whole bodies belong to God. If he says die, uh, that's the end of you, buddy. But, but uh, as long as I have breath in my body, uh, first off, I'm going to give God praise because I didn't have to have it in the first place. Uh, but secondly, I'm going to shoot my best shot. Tell somebody, shoot your best shot. Uh, it doesn't matter what I'm facing. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. Uh, if I hear that Jesus is passing by, I'm going to do everything that I can to get his attention. I reminded a blind Bartimaeus who, who when they heard that Jesus was passing by, began to cry out with a loud voice so much so that church people uh, told him to shut up, but he said, I don't tell me to shut up. You haven't been where I've been. You haven't gone through what I've gone through. I need something from God. I need deliverance from God. And this may just be my last chance. So, so I'm not wasting this opportunity. Tell somebody I'm not passing this up. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says the crowd out cried out with a loud voice. Yes. <laughs> they weren't going to waste this opportunity. You realize now that they could not get close to Jesus. They didn't have the luxury of the woman with the issue of blood. They couldn't touch the hem of his garment. They'd have died. They'd have killed them. He couldn't by law. They couldn't get in proximity to Jesus at all. Uh, history says somewhere around 100 paces. They couldn't get anywhere near him. They couldn't get anywhere close to him. And, and leprosy is a disease that uh, it's degenerative and it messes with your skin, but it, it shuts down your whole body. So, so they had to muster whatever little energy they had for however long they had this disease to, to be able to cry out, likely hoarse, likely barely above a whisper, uh, is, is all they could usually be able to talk because of uh, the weight of leprosy, because of what it does to your body. But, but with everything they had, they cried out with a loud voice and said, Lord, please have mercy on me. And that's something else that I really want to point out, that, that we don't have the luxury of underestimating the role that mercy plays in our life. Uh, let me say that one more time. We don't have the luxury of underestimating the, the role that mercy plays in your life. The, uh, the Bride of Lamentation said it like this, this I recall to my mind, and it's because of this that I have hope, that it's because of the Lord's mercies yes, yes. that we are not consumed. Why? Because his compassions yes. Fail not. They knew it every morning. And, and if he was like me and, uh, and unfaithful, I'd be in a whole mess right now. But I'm so glad that God's not like you and he's not like me. That, that his faithfulness endures. That, that he's faithful to the core. And, and even when I'm unfaithful, he's faithful to me. Even when I turn my back on him, he, he turned and inclined his ear unto me. It's because of the Lord's mercies uh, that we are not consumed. It's because of the Lord's compassion because he looked down and had pity on me when I, when I didn't deserve it. When, when I didn't know where to turn. When, when I deserve to die, but I deserve to be thrown out. It is of the Lord's mercy. It is of the Lord's mercies that we weren't consumed. I heard my writer say this, that, that mercy rewrote my life. I was headed to hell. I don't know what my destination was, but mercy turned me around. I didn't know where I was going to end up, but I knew I was going to end up in a mess, but, but mercy rewrote my story. Just somebody mercy changed my 
Put your hands together and thank God for mercy. I'm only here because of his mercy. I didn't do anything good enough to warrant it. I'm here because of his mercy. My titles don't matter. I'm a rank sinner just like the rest of them. I'm here because of his mercy. Yeah, I grew up in a saved house and just as unsaved as I wanted to be. His mercy kept me. Right up, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Notice they didn't even ask for deliverance. They just said, Have mercy. Yes. God, you may not heal me from this, but just have mercy. Let me get through this. They used to say, No. The last kid to move the mountain, give him strength to climb, but strength to climb is mercy. Yes. I prayed and asked God to, to keep me from COVID at all costs. That didn't happen, but but his mercy got me through. Yes. His mercy made me. I, I, I'm trying to move on, but I, I'm only here because of his mercy. But our Lord, have mercy. Jesus does something interesting. Thank you, Jesus. I dare say, and don't shut the book on me, I'll fix it. Thank you, Lord. But Jesus does something almost scandalous. It's almost annoying. Look at what Jesus does. The Bible says that they cried out, mustered up everything that they could, said, Lord, have mercy on me. The Bible says the only thing Jesus said is go show yourselves to the priest. Now, if you think about that, that's a fool's journey. Why, why am I going to go show myself to the priest? And I see the, the lesions on my hand and on my body. What's the point? I'm going to show myself to the priest. If I get too close, they're going to kill me. If I mess up and step in the wrong yard, that's my life. So what Jesus is asking them is to, to risk their lives to go show themselves to a priest. Notice the priest is on the inside of the city. On the inside of the gates. Go find a priest and show yourselves to him. Makes no sense. And I like what they do because the Bible says that they turn around and they do it. Now, I don't believe in employing the Holy Ghost imagination and speaking where God speaks, but I, I dare say at least one of them weren't on board with this plan. <laughs> Can I just be honest? If I were the leper, I would be the one that wasn't on board with this plan. <laughs> Y'all go do what you want to do. I'm going to say right here. He's either going to heal me or he's not, but I'm not about to go risk what little life I have over something I don't know what the outcome is going to be. But for whatever reason, the Bible says that they go. And I just want to stop right there and point out one more thing. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. Stop asking God questions. Yes, yes. And I'm not one of those people that don't believe in asking God what I ask him all the time. But, but there are certain times you just need to not ask God questions and do what he says he's going to do. Amen. The Bible's clear that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He does not think like us. I heard one bishop say that, that if it's God, it's not going to make sense. There's, there's a whole lot of things that God tells us to do that, that don't make any sense. There's a whole lot of things that God tells us to do uh, that really put us in harm's way. But but I serve a God who's able to keep me from harm. I serve a God who said that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That doesn't mean that he's not going to send you through a valley. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to get close to death. Uh, can I take it further? That doesn't mean you won't die. Lazarus met death. Uh, he said to Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, I serve a God that says that whatever I tell you to do, do it because I'm going to make it good. Uh, my word does not go out and return unto me void. Whatever, whatever plan I lay for you, he said to Jeremiah, I know the plans that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. I, I trust God enough to know that he's not going to send me on a suicide mission. I trust God enough to know that whatever he tells me to do, no matter how crazy it is, he's going to bring something out of it. I don't know how many millions of dollars I missed out trying to 
rationalize what God told me to do. I don't know how many blessings I turn my back on trying to figure out what God, whatever God tells you to do. Do it. The Bible says that they go. And as they went, they looked down. Suddenly the lesions and blisters disappeared. I don't know if you've ever seen a leper. Uh, their skin is disgusting, let's be honest. Uh, it's not somebody that you want to shake hands with. Suddenly they looked down and the leper skin, I dare say, looked brand new. Suddenly they looked down and they realized something happened. Now, I don't know, and again, I don't employ an imagination, but I, I don't know if they felt it internally. I don't know if they, you know, felt their skin stop itching or whatever it was, but, but something caused them to realize that something's different. Uh, something changed. And the Bible says that when one of them realized, turned back, and with a loud voice, yes. cried, giving thanks to God. And if you look further, the Bible says that and fell at his feet, not his feet, the leper's feet, but at the master's feet. Yes. Which means that he not only opened his mouth and cried, but, but ran back, fell at the master's feet, giving him praise. Yes. What am I trying to tell you? Uh, if ever there was a moment to come to church and sit here like you're cute and sedated and sophisticated, this is not it. Uh, if ever there was a time to come and, and silently wave your hands and, and quicken like good apostolics tell you to do, this is not that moment. Uh, the, the song just said that as I look back over my life yes. <laughs> and I begin to think things over. Another song said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus yes. and all that he's done for me. And the blessing is that we're, we're in a position right now where we all have a united testimony because all we have to do is look back over the last 300 or so days yes, yes, yes. when I realized how often I could have died. Yes, yes. When I realized that the virus that I had should have taken me out. Yes. When I realized that, that, that people acting crazy, losing their minds, murders uh, skyrocketing. When I realized that, that the hatred, Black Lives Matter. When I realized that I could have been a casualty at any given moment, at any given day. Uh, the fact that I live in a nice neighborhood wasn't enough to protect me. The, the fact that I may have money in my account wasn't enough to save me. When, when I look back over the fact that I was helpless all year long, and the only reason that I'm here is because God kept me. I, I turn around and this is not the time to sit down and shut up. But the Bible said he opened his mouth and with a loud voice, I gave God praise. I tell somebody it's time to turn around and get loud. Tell them I can be to turn around. And give loud. Think about what God has done for you. Think about where he's brought you from. Think about the blessings that he's made. The doors that he's opened. I don't let arrogance and pride keep you from opening your mouth and giving God the best praise. Everybody turn around and give loud. Turn around and louder than that. I turn around and remember what he's done for you. Remember the way he kept you. Remember that he put food on your table when there was none there. That he put clothes on your back when you didn't have any. That he healed your body, kept you from dangers, seen and unseen. Somebody ought to get. Time now. For acting like church people. Notice what the Bible said. That of the ten, it was the one who we wouldn't let in our church. The Bible said it was a Samaritan. That wasn't a Jew. Uh, that was one that they, that they couldn't have around. The one that wasn't welcome in the synagogue. It was that one that came back to say thank you. Tell somebody, stop acting like church folks. Because uh, church folks are a trip. Church folks will come all the way over dangerous highways and byways. Uh, walk past uh, uh, devastating car accidents. Walk up to church after uh, uh, all week long walking like obliviously through dangers. The Bible says seen and unseen. Come up, sit in church, cross their legs, fold their arms and act like God owes them something. Uh, it's time out for acting like a church. God doesn't owe me anything. 
The breath that I have belongs to me. The air that I breathe is his. Everything I own belongs to him. So, so forgive me if I'm not coming up here acting like I have some sense. I, I'll lose my mind for God because when I think about what he's done for me, it's enough to blow my mind. Stop, stop acting like you can control anything. I have news for you. You're as helpless as you don't want to be. It's only because of God. Around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Get loud. Get loud. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's time out. And I'm done. I made it. I'm two minutes over. It's time out. For church as usual. Yes. It's time out. For coming with form and with fashion. It's time out for choreographed praise yeah. and elaborate attitudes. Jesus. And I've been in church 33 years. I know we do that very well. Yes. I heard one preacher say that with this pandemic, if you really think about it, he put everybody outside the church, <laughs> shut every church down. And his intention was that you're not coming back in here bringing that same mess you left with. So now that we're back in church, yes, let's not bring 2020 attitudes back here. Amen. We've all been guilty of coming to church and having a headache and acting like God didn't do anything for us. Uh, I, I do it better than most. Uh, we've all been guilty of coming to church with attitudes, but it, it's time out for that. Jesus. Tell somebody, God's been too good to you. Good. He's done too much for you. And if you never did another thing, the, bio, the old people used to say, he's done enough. But can I tell you something? We wouldn't survive if you didn't do something else. Yes, yes. Every moment that we're alive, God is doing something for us. Your heart beats somewhere around 100,000 times a day. Uh, every single one of those, God is responsible for. If you said stop, I you drop immediately. So, so it's not about what God has already done. I need God to keep doing something for me. I need God to keep making a way for me. I need God to provide. But, but while I'm here, let me stop, pause, and turn around and think for what he's already done. Uh, I'm almost done, but, uh, but Psalms 100 reads, and it's one of the things that we always talk about. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And I struggled with that for many years because I couldn't understand why the Bible was being redundant. I entered into its gates with thanksgiving and into its courts with praise. Isn't that the same thing? And God let me know that it's not the same thing. Uh, the gates and the courts, number one, are two different spaces. But, but as you walked into the tabernacle, when you got to the gates, he said, stop and thank me. Why? Because you made it here and you didn't have to. Uh, I let you get here and you didn't have to. Uh, you, you almost you should have died on the way here, but but I let you live. Yeah. Thanksgiving looks back and says, Lord, I thank you. I, I don't know how I got over, but I'm thankful that you let me get here. I don't know how I made it, but I, but God, I'm thankful for your faithfulness. I'm thankful for your goodness. I'm thankful, God, that that you let me live when I didn't deserve to live. So so I stop and I thank Him. But but He says now as you go further, because you don't just stop us again. But once you get into the courts, now it says praise Him. And I couldn't understand the difference. God, why? Didn't, didn't I just praise you? Didn't I just do that? He said, no, you thank me. Uh, thanks and praise are two different things. He said, you thank me for what I did. Praise or thanks looks backwards. You, you can't thank somebody if they haven't done anything. But he said, I, I've done some stuff for you, so stop and thank me for it. But now that you're inside, now that you're in my territory, recognize that I don't stop just with what I've done. But I've got some more stuff ahead of me. So I tell you to stop and thank me for what I've done. But I tell you to praise me for what I'm getting ready to do. Somebody ought to turn around and with a loud voice. Thank God for what he's done. But recognize that your life shall be greater. And as loud as you were, looking back, turn it up another notch and give God praise for what he's going to do. That may be good enough, and I'm done. I told you I was done. But that, that may be a good enough praise for what you need going forward. But, but I need God to do some big things for me. And I, I'm foolish enough to believe that the, the, the proportion of my praise is directly proportional to that of my uh, uh, blessings. So I don't just need God to give me little blessings. I, I don't just need two blessings going forward. But, but I need God to do some big things for me. If you need God to do some big things for you, give him the biggest praise.
Come somebody get loud. Get loud. Is the Lord of mercy is. Yes. Thank you. That we're even here. Because his compassions don't fail. He had compassion. He pitied the lepers and healed them as they went. A preacher hasn't got healed yet, or you ain't going nowhere. about you, but I don't know if you've ever looked up and been in so much pain and realized you went through the day or through the week or through the month or through the year that that pain had gone away and didn't even realize when it happened. Yes. As they went. I don't know if you've ever been so broke. <laughs> Just destitute. People calling all the time. And all of a sudden you don't know where, you don't know when that's a change. You picked up a little bit of money. Suddenly people aren't calling as much. Suddenly you're driving something. I don't, I don't know if you've ever looked back on your life and gauged just where you've been and where God's brought you. And he has new, he's not done with you. Turn around. Jesus. Get loud. Yes. Yes. God's been yes. too good to us. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And he's not through with us. No, he's not. If you're here, if you have breath in your body, God has plans for you. So what that tells me is that I should be loud all the time. There should never be a moment yes, yes. when I'm not either thanking him for what he's done yes. or praising him for what he's doing. Yes. Yes. Turn around. Yes. Get loud if you're here. This is the altar call. Yes.